जय श्री कृष्ण गुरु थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग साई सत्चरित्र पारायण वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल आई होप यू हैड अ वंडरफुल डे ओम श्री गुरु ब्यो नम ओम श्री गणेशाय नम ओम श्री सरस्वताय नम ओम श्री गुरु दत्तात्रेय नम ओम श्री महालक्ष्मीय नम गुरु ब्रह्म गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्मा श्री गुरु बे नम श्री साई सत्चरित्र द लाइफ एंड टीचिंग्स ऑफ श्रीडी साई बाबा विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेरी स्टॉप दैट इज चैप्टर थर्टी फाइव the removal of doubts and glorification of udi my obeisances to shri ganesh to shri saraswati and shri guru maharaj to the family deity to shri sita ramachandra my most humble obeisances i bow in reverence to the most venerable guru shri sainath we stopped at verse 126 which we ended one story now we'll begin with a new one that is from verse 127 A devotee may be trusty or censorious, but Sai is kind to both equally. This compassionate mother will not neglect one and embrace the other. So, as they were ready to leave, Baba asked Kaka for fifteen rupees as dakshina and said to him, "He who has given me one rupee as dakshina, him will I have to give ten times more in return." will i ever take anything free from anyone i do not ask each and every one for dakshina the question of dakshina comes only for him to whom the fakir points a finger wow this is very powerful you need to understand this i will explain and this fakir too will ask only of him to whom he is indebted when such a giver gives he is only show, sowing the seeds of which he will reap the harvest later wealth is beneficial to the wealthy only in so far as it is spent on dharma and in charity for ethical conduct and charity alone make for true knowledge i am going to reread this few verses you need to understand this is very very profound truth and very very important in everybody's spiritual development and also to live a righteous and life of goodness he who has given me 1 rupee as dakshina him will i have to give 10 times more in return so you need to understand one thing very importantly and this is very clearly mentioned by baba see if you give in return back 10 times more or even 100 times more okay this is exactly what the great masters do people think giving a dakshina is the most painful thing i think yesterday we did this very beautiful stories about uh, you know different di- disciples and devotees of baba who had that doubt in the mind and who thought who thought that the fakir how can he be a fakir or a saint when he is trying to collect money baba is not collecting money and baba doesn't even need your money the only reason why he is taking because he wants to redeem you of your own sins karma and he wants to bestow your spiritual being he wants to bestow his benediction on you and he wants to grant his grace on you grace is there but for the spiritual up- upliftment or you he might be you know you might be indebted to him we don't know the reasons but never ever doubt or question the great gurus and the great masters when they ask for dakshina on the contrary it is you who must offer the dakshina and please know that in the earlier uh, chapters of brahma gnana part 1 and part 2 we have very uh, you know clearly and in depth did this teachings about baba what he has imparted on dakshina itself on guru dakshina what is the significance of guru dakshina why you need to give it we have gone through in detail and if you want as a refresher please go and listen to those chapters on brahma gnana but just to reiterate the point it is extremely important for you to offer guru dakshina there is no free lunch even in god's heaven nothing comes to free you have to wear yourself out see when the great masters impart the knowledge for the knowledge to fructify within you you have to pay the guru dakshina and please don't think you can get any knowledge without offering a guru dakshina whatever that is you can offer within your capacity you need to offer the guru the guru dakshina there is no free lunch in god's heaven my guruji will say 
you know, two days ago, I was telling him a very um, interesting thing. I told him, you know, all the teachings that you have imparted and you've, it's all recorded and it is available on YouTube on Krishna Knows and on 1,800 uh, channels on the pod podcast. Now, many people do listen. There are a lot of people who listen and then take some of those essence of those real knowledge, which my Guruji has imparted, my Krishna Guruji, and they also go and talk about it. So I was telling him, Oh, your, you know, your knowledge is being used by people. I just made this stupid comment. You know, so he said, my Krishna Guruji said a very beautiful thing. See, in the material world, you know, whatever is your knowledge or whatever, you know, technology product that you have developed, the ideas that you have come, come up with, you can patent it. You can say it is, you know, it's, it's your idea. You can have an ownership to that. But to the divine knowledge, there's no ownership. Because this knowledge is universal truth. It, it's the knowledge that anybody can seek. Anybody can use it for the benefit of the entire universe, for the upliftment of one's, one's own self, for the spiritual progress and for the goodness of everybody in this universe. And my Guruji actually recently explained in the Das Bodh that knowledge is something you have to give. You have to impart to the others that which you learn, that which you benefit. And today, if you have been benefit, you know, if you have benefited with that knowledge, please pass it on to those who are true seekers because they are also wanting to evolve in their world. They also want to become good. They also want that path, but they don't know where to find. So if you come across that seeker, please impart. Like in yesterday, my Guruji gave a very beautiful satsang. He, he taught me something. He says, I see your, you know, you know, that goodness or I see that the passion in you, uh, in a sense, for the spiritual being of everybody, in the sense you want everybody to understand and not make some of the mistakes that you have made or people in this world are making. But he says sometimes, see, sometimes we have to be very happy with what others want, you know. It's okay if somebody wants to either get married or they want to, you know, uh, take up a career or they want to do something in their world. You should never stop anybody. Reason being, see, it is their desire. They do want to go. So we have to find, see the goodness. We have to always bless them, be good and, you know, always care about their well-being alone. So he, my Guruji says, I don't stop anybody. I will only give them that knowledge. See, if you do this, this is going to have a repercussion or this is what is going to happen in, in your life. See, we are all ignorant human beings. They don't understand the truth. Unfortunately, even when me, during my initial journey with my master, many times he said, don't do this. And when I have gone and done something, he has, you know, warned me before, I had to face the brunt of it. It's not a joke. So there, you know, there is a danger, there is an obstacle, there is a calamity that's going to happen. But when you listen to your guru, that calamity can be averted. But with your self-deceit and conceit and you go perform the same action, then God save you. Yeah, your Guruji is very compassionate. He's like we said, no, the compassionate mother, the Guru is a compassionate mother. He will still save you. But it is very sad that despite warning you, you end up doing, using your mind's self-conceit. So this is what the great masters are. They are they are so sweet. They are, I, I don't have, you know, I, I keep using this adjective because I'm always lost of words to describe their greatness. It's very difficult to describe the greatness of these divine beings. So he was telling me, it's okay. We have to wish good for them. Let us make them feel happy in the decisions that they take, the choices that they make. Yeah, I understand they are making the mistake and they will sometimes have to learn the hard way. What do you do? But you know what? We will take care of them. So this is the compassionate mother he is. Many a time he'll say, I do teach in my satsang. If people don't want to listen to it and want to stick to what they want to do, then I can't help them. They will have to go through that journey in life and understand. And experience is the greatest teacher. They say, right, experience, um, experience comes first and the lessons later. So people have to go and experience that truth. Why are why is the Guruji saying, don't get attached and lost in the material world. Do not go after your desires because they are the root cause of your miseries. Mis you'll become miserable. The material worldly attachments will bind you forever. 
and after that it is very difficult to get out of it but my guruji will never stop anybody and and he is the one who will bless them if they wish to get married or if they wish to do something he will never say don't do it on the contrary he will say i will bless you do well go ahead and do what you want in life but the whole aspect is that itself is a path for them to progress to experience the truth about his teachings this is how the spiritual knowledge is understood and sometimes he will allow not sometimes all the time he will allow us to make those mistakes you know why it's not that he wants us to fail on the contrary he wants us to succeed but if you do not make that mistake you are not going to understand that lesson so many times he'll say okay you go do it and then we end up using our mind and committing that action and only after that he'll come and say you know what you did this wrong i said why didn't you stop krishna ma and that time he'll say no if i if i would have stopped you that time how would you understand that this is a mistake and then you will keep continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again till you don't burn your finger sometimes you are not going to understand that you are not supposed to do that action so your mind needs to get that experience so that it will be cautious next time not to guide you in doing wrong things so this is very powerful the way he taught and you know today um, one of his disciples was asking what is this um how do i overcome my mind you know what is this uh, power who is this devi who is this shakti we are using a term called shakti but there is no devi like we are doing devi mahatmyam so this question was asked to my krishna guruji and in that he very beautifully explained you know what is it he explained he said there is the there is an active and a passive principle so the passive principle they represent it as a male entity the the active principle as a female entity you know the the male and the female aspect but there is nothing like a male and the female it's an active and a passive principle so they are just a principle so the devi is you that divine being is you so what it what is taught here as a part of spirituality the adhyatmic lesson is that you have all this power inside of you you need to unravel that hidden potentials unravel the divinity who you are empower yourself to evolve on the path of spiritual to become divine to to you know to live and learn what are the good virtues what are the good propensities you have to develop on that and do not fall into the evil propensities so this disciple asked a very interesting question he said you know morning 4:30 i want to wake up but somehow you know that that minute of waking up and then you just want to get up but that mind says oh little more i want to sleep how do i do this my guru ji gave a very simple and a beautiful answer he said look you are you are learning devi mahatmyam in that all these you know demons are nothing but your evil propensities they are energy inertia lethargy you know lust greed hunger hatred you name it i am incapable i am a martyr so many different things pride arrogance you i can just rattle off the list goes endlessly right the list is endless but what you need to do is this he says tell your mind please help me to wake up at 4:30 am i want to progress say it very nice sweetly why because see the mind is also lord shri krishna himself he says in bhagavad gita i am that mind in the indriyas because the mind is the highest so everything that is highest is says i am that in you so the mind is also the lord himself doesn't mean the mind equals lord okay it's it's an inference okay so please understand and tomorrow don't tell me oh uh, rajma said that mind is lord shri krishna no 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 in bhagavad gita he is inferring to that what is the highest okay so you have to just tell the mind you have to make mind your best friend see the mind can either show you upside or downside but how do you train the mind so when you tell the mind in that manner the mind will start listening to you it will become the tool it will be the one who's going to help you to overcome this inertia to become disciplined why when lord shri krishna himself is an essence of that mind why will he not let, you know help you to evolve my guruji will say when you sincerely tell your mind and sleep you have to train it every single day you need to make that effort to tell see we forget all these lessons that one hour of satsang we will listen to it very carefully 
But what happens after that? We'll forget. We'll close the book. We'll close the scripture and then we'll not even go back to that. I have also been the same thing. I'll not open the book and then read. See, we are in the Kali Yugam, okay? We don't want to put so much effort. We find it too difficult to go and spend the time going deeper in what is being taught. So, so what happens is then you'll shut this and your mind will conveniently forget what is being taught. So the application of knowledge doesn't happen. And that is why you don't progress as fast as you can. I mean, at least as, as much as you should, you don't progress there. Because you are not consistent in your effort. This is what my Krishna Guruji teaches. And he's, he very beautifully explained. And I felt, oh my God, this is so powerful. I myself learn every single day. There's something new that I keep learning. And, and this is what the Gurus come here to do. This is the truth. See, I keep telling you, this scripture, if read by anybody else, this will be just mere stories. You are not going to infer the, sign the spiritual aspect of it. But when the real master, like my Krishna Guruji, explains, he is the one who can, you know, give what the secret, because these are all codex. It's codices, means they're all coded. It's in code. So the one who can unravel that code is the Guru alone. Why? Because Guru Saksha Parabrahma. Only con God can explain who our God is, not any ordinary human being. So these great masters are the manifestations of that Parabrahma. The Parabrahma manifests in the form of a Guru to impart this profound truth. So I hope you understood and very importantly, the Guru Dakshina aspect is very important. Don't be a mean human being. Don't be, you know, petty human being. If you ever give the Gurus, he returns it back to you, you know, many four times, many four times. He gives it back to you so many more times. Like I said, 10 times more I have to give you, 100 times more I have to give Baba keeps saying this. So why are you thinking that, you know, oh, my money is going away somewhere. No, don't, don't be a petty human being. You need to have the dhanat, the big heartedness. It's extremely important. And here Baba is saying very profound truth. Wealth is to establish dharma. It is not for, you know, sensual pleasures. There is a reason why that you have got that wealth. It is not for just enjoying and getting lost in your own, um, you know, I, me, myself. It's not to um, pander to your own sensual pleasures. No, it's given so that the wealth can be distributed. Nobody is saying that you should not take care of yourself. Of course, you need to fill your stomach, but also share a portion of that wealth to the ones who need in this world, the needy and the poor, those who are deserving, whoever that is, you need to share what you have. We Like we say, sharing is caring. But you know, man is very selfish. He's highly petty-minded. So don't be that. Don't be a miser in life. So let us see what Baba is saying now. Will I ever take anything free from anyone? I do not ask each and every one for Dakshina. And this is very important. Baba doesn't take Dakshina from everybody. No great masters take Dakshina from everyone. It is only from the select few. And there is a reason why he takes, you know, that Dakshina. Whether he might ask you or he will even make you give it on your own. So the ways are incomprehensible. The question of Dakshina comes only for him to whom the Fakir points a finger. What does that mean? There's, there is multiple meaning towards that. To whom the fakir points a finger. It means either, you know, he's correcting you. He's showing you the path of spiritual upliftment. He's, he's guiding you on the path of spirituality. So that time he will point fingers at you and say, you're doing this right, you're doing this right. They actually, you know, put in their energy on you. They're teaching this knowledge so that someday you will become the divine being and also impart that knowledge it has to be carried forward. You see, they are not just leaving it with you alone. You have to give it. That is what we, we, I was, you know, I started with. Like my Guruji says in, in the Das Bodh Satsang, it is beautifully mentioned how you have to pass on this knowledge. It is not to live with yourself. See, whatever my Guruji is teaching, it's a universal knowledge. He'll always say, I don't know. I don't own any knowledge. He'll never even acknowledge that he knows. That is the humility that he shows. So we need to be humble. The moment you think you know too much, then your fall is eminent, okay? 
ready be ready to go and go into the gutters never take credit for this knowledge because this is not the knowledge you have same likewise with me i do not understand any of these things i have only studied under the tutelage of my guruji and continue to do so but the words are of his wisdom like yesterday when i didn't give examples too many and i was just going through explaining what this stories meant he came and you know gave a piece of mind to me saying why haven't you today given examples so that is the way he trains he is still teaching me i am not a perfect being you know what i i feel so humble the other day my krishna guruji himself is te- telling that you know 20 years i have been teaching i will still not say i have attained some perfection or anything but he is the perfect being and yet from his mouth that is what he said so imagine where am i i am nowhere in life but i have to do it is my swadharma it is my guru's instruction it is my krishna guruji's instruction it is his ordain it is his command so i need to sit here and do this yes i am going to make mistakes or there might be you know that i i didn't understand certain things but he's there to guide the words of our his, his wisdom it will come perfectly that which i have to convey because this body has no knowledge whatever the words are coming from my mouth are the words of this divine lord almighty lord the words are of his wisdom alone which is universal mind this is the lord you know he is he is the sachidanand the knowledge himself so i am only a conduit i am only a tool who is serving his purpose so this is a very important task yes in the process i am also getting purified you are also getting purified like the narrator and the listener both benefit and we will evolve on the path of spirituality and our spiritual wheel will happen so coming back and this finger too will ask only of him to whom he is indebted this is very important to whom he is indebted not to everyone when such a giver gives he is only sowing the seeds of which he will reap the harvest later yes my krishna guru ji said a very beautiful thing he says look you know when somebody offers guru dakshina he is never going to touch that money i am not joking he will just tell me okay just let me know who has offered what it has to just i just need to unknow that's it the reason why he wants to know is because it goes into his account meaning not bank account a physical bank account it goes in his i don't know whatever divine kitty where he says at the right time when somebody needs that money they will get that so again that's what it says here right baba saying when such a giver gives he is only sowing the seeds of which he will reap the harvest later so now you know when at the right moment when they are at the need of the hour that money will come from somewhere that's a blessing and grace so it goes into the divine kitty he just he's and having an understand i know the okay this is what they have offered this is what they have offered so at the right time they will get it back 100 times more or 10 times whatever the number of times more wealth is beneficial to the wealthy only in so far as it is spent on dharma see this is a very important lesson wealth is to establish dharma not for your purpose you know back um, many years ago even before i i think right after i joined work this is really 19 18 19 years ago i know one of my friends she was an ardent devotee of baba and she had she didn't have a penny with her she was she had a job she she had a very bad marriage and uh, she she had divorced she had a small boy she had to take care of him she was struggling in her life but one thing i must tell you when it's coming to baba she will even beg borrow steal but she will want to celebrate the you know baba's uh, the different festivals right she will do one uh, during this period uh, navratri she will do a very beautiful puja of baba i think on the maha samadhi day i can't remember right now so every year she would do this annual celebrations of uh, for sai baba and invite everyone and will definitely make a trip to shirdi come what may at that time i wondered oh my god it's so beautiful this girl has so much devotion to baba and i only i got to know baba through her can you believe how funny it is um, every single day i would walk so i i was studying in a school called saint miras and on my way i have already narrated this story but just reiterating on my way to the school they 
in Cambridge layout, there was a store, there's a uh, temple, Sai Baba's temple there. And I would see every single morning and I would be like, oh, who is this old man? I don't know who he is. But I just like, okay, I'll just pray because everybody would pray, so I would pray. I didn't even know until literally so many years of my life has gone past and only through her did I know who Baba was. Can you believe that? But that is how the divine work. It is, you can't know them. Even the God can be right in front of your eyes, but yet you can't see him. This is how it works. But when that right time comes of knowing the divine Lord Almighty and when you're ready for that journey, that is when that grace comes in. And then through someone, you will get to know the divine Lord. This is the way it actually works. And then I used to admire how she manages. You know, she would borrow the money and she will get the best of everything for Baba. And, you know, you know, do that beautiful puja, the parai, and she'll complete reading the poti and do that samapti very beautifully. She'll decorate, you know, such a grand manner. I was, I used to really admire her, uh, you know, devotion to uh, Shridi Sai Baba. And after which she will make a trip to uh, Shridi. Now, what does this mean? This means that whatever she's doing, Baba is definitely going to give it back to her when the need of the hour comes. But you know what I've seen? No matter what her situation is, you know, she had she had a job which would help her sustain because she had to take care of her son. He would, she put him in a very good school and she was able to manage his education and have a basic sustenance of her life. So Baba ensured that. This is what the Divine Lord Almighty, you know, do. So, and then during that period, I would always, uh, she had a very small poti. It's like a question and answers. So every time when I want to ask something, she'll say, okay, you open this. It's a Marathi uh, question and answer book she had. She would have kept it in front of Baba. And that time she'll say, open and you can ask a question. I would ask and she will read that, that, that answer from that book and she'll give me the answer. Every single time I've asked something, Baba will say, a wealth is to establish dharma. And I didn't know what that meant. Neither could she explain to me what that meant until I met my Krishna Guruji. And then he explained what does wealth is to establish dharma mean. He says, God has given us whatever that wealth we have. It is not to just fulfill our sensual pleasures, our own bellies are, and only take care of our family members. It is to ensure that everybody's well-being is taken care of. And from, you know, you need to have the big heart to give. See, we come with nothing and we go with nothing. But it is very important to share. And if that wealth can serve the purpose in establishing the dharma, the righteousness, the goodness, and for somebody's upliftment, that is the purpose, it, it, that's the best purpose it has. Otherwise, that wealth has no use. When, when you go buy a jewelry, when you go buy a sari, when you do, you know, go spend on yourself. How has it helped establish dharma? Tell me. It's only filled your sensual pleasures. This is what it means. For ethical conduct and charity alone make for true knowledge. See, for ethical conduct and charity alone make for true knowledge. So you have to be ethical, the ethical knowledge, which is with absolute integrity, sincerity, truth in it. There are no two ways about it. There are no versions of truth in it. It is one alone. Ethical knowledge, which is, in a, which is done in a very proper manner, which abides by the Vedas and Shastras or by our scriptures and charity alone. You have to give in charity. And only then it makes for true knowledge, not otherwise. But people needlessly treat their hard-earned wealth as being meant for the pleasures they desire and thus neglect to use it for dharma and charitable deeds. Oh my God. I've already discussed this, but I'm going to reread this again. But people needlessly treat their hard-earned wealth as being meant for the pleasures they desire and thus neglect to use it for dharma. And charitable deeds. See, this is not what the wealth is for. So Baba has very clearly explained. I think I've discussed that enough. So let us continue now. But happy is the man who never spends his tens of crores of rupees collected so carefully, penny by penny, just for his fondness for sensual pleasures. 
Everybody knows the Vedic aphorism that you can never get unless you give. And this is very important. When, when you give, the universe gives you. My Guruji has always said this. My Krishna Guruji will keep saying, see, only when you give, will the universe give you. Don't hold anything. Nothing is yours. So what makes you think it is yours? Whatever you earn, oh, I worked really hard. Actually, today's satsang was very beautiful. This evening's Das Bodh satsang. You must go listen. Who is this doer? <laughs> you know, it is amazing. And you still can't find out who is this doer. So why am I taking credit? I work really hard. You are just a chosen one. You are an instrument. You are a conduit so that the water can flow through you. The wealth can be passed on through you. So you are there. And many a time my Krishna Guruji has taught that. Um, he's taught that. You know there is. You plant the seed. You plant the seed. You, or you sow the seed. You, you know. You take care of the plant. You grow the tree. And then the fruits will come. But you might not even be there to enjoy the fruits. Or savor the sweet mangoes or whatever the fruit might be but you are doing it for somebody who needs to enjoy the fruits of your hard work your hard labor so what makes you think it is for you there is a reason why god you know god makes this happen and in this context i'm going to give you a very beautiful story which my krishna guruji has narrated i'm sure you all know the actor mithun chakravati so he had some eight or Okay, I don't know the exact number of dogs. It could be 10 or 20 approximately. So he had built a very beautiful house um, for his ex-wife. And then she didn't stay there too long. And at that, and she left, she had left him. And so what happened was he had, he had got these dogs and these dogs, he took them and he um, made them stay in this particular house. You know, it's a very beautiful bungalow he had. And every single day, uh, these dogs would get the food. So there was people who would go and uh, give the food to the dogs and take care of them. And they had an air-conditioned home. So somebody was telling, you know, how fortunate these dogs are. This was told to Mithun Chakravati. How fortunate the dogs are that, you know, they are living in this, such a luxury manner. And see, they are getting such a wonderful meal and all that, right? So, you know, what his answer was? He says, I am sorry, it's not that way, it's the other way around. I have been given that facility so that they can be fed, so that they can be, get to stay in that bungalow. It is not the other way around, that I have so I am giving them. No, it is because they need to get that, that is why God has given me. I am only an instrument of the divine. You know how profound this is? And that is the supreme truth. So you need to understand. You are only an instrument. So never have this arrogance or ego. Thinking that I am the one who is earning. And I am the one who is taking care of. Whether it's your father, mother, brother, sister, friend, foe, enemy. Anybody right. You are not the one who is taking care of anyone in this world. Let me be very clear. It is the Lord Almighty's will alone. You are mere an instrument in his hands. And when we harbor this ego and arrogance thinking that I am the one who's taking care, then please know that you can never ever go ahead on the path of spiritual. On the contrary, you're going to get lost in the material world and every action of yours is going to convert itself into a karmic action. And then you have to be born again and again to fulfill that karma. So you're granting yourself many more millions of lives. And you know, when you say you're taking care of somebody in, in the next life or some other life, you have to be in that other person's place and the other person must be taking care of you. So you're sanctioning yourself so many millions of lives. So why do you need that? Do not have any ownership. Don't even say I am the doer. You're just an instrument. Surrender to the will of the divine. That is what Baba is teaching here. In this. So what? Oh, oh sorry. Everybody knows the Vedic aphorism that you never get unless you give. What was given on an earlier occasion stands clearly before Baba and therefore he asked for Dakshina. In his incarnation as Ram, Ramachandra gave away innumerable images of women in gold and its fruit was enjoyed by Sri Krishna 16,000 times when he incarnated as Krishna. A devotee 
totally devoid of devotion, knowledge and renunciation is indeed in a poor, piteous state. He is fixed, he is first fixed in renunciation and then given knowledge and devotion. So I'm going to go back to the earlier verse and make a small clarification here. It's mentioned in his incarnation as Ram, Ramachandra gave away innumerable images of women in gold and its fruit was enjoyed by Sri Krishna 16,000 times when he incarnated as Krishna. But you need to understand one thing. These are all Lord's Leelas. They are called the play. But why did the Lord get even married with 16,108 wives we say, right? Those are not the wives. It says they are the 16,108 vrittis, the tendencies which a human body has. And only Lord Sri Krishna was a, has overcome all that vrittis. That is why he is supreme being. He is the master of everything. So this 16,108, we, we give it in a form of story and everything has a profound truth behind it. And in fact, next month we will be celebrating Diwali. So this 16,000 is connected to the, to the demon Narakasura. How Satyabhama kills Narakasura along with Sri Krishna and she saves those 16,100 um, you know, the women who, are, who were captured by him. And then the Lord accepts them as his wife because they said, who else will marry us? We, we have been kidnapped and people will, you know, talk bad about us. And then he redeems them by accept, accepting them as his, all, all of them as his wives. So we'll, we'll come back to that story. Probably we might even want to do a session on small and to get a real understanding as to what Diwali stands for. Why do we celebrate Narakachaturda, Narakchaturdashi? We will do that. Okay. So let us come back here. So the lesson here is that Sri Krishna is a perfect celibate. He's untouched by anything. And with that, there's another story that opens up. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Today I'm stuck with stories after stories because yesterday I didn't tell. And today, you know, there's overflow of stories that's coming in. But I don't want to deviate myself and in going into another story. But I know the story will definitely talk about it in some other context. So with this, let me continue. So Lord Sri Krishna is a perfect celibate. He is the one who has overcome all these vrittis. But you and me, you know, very few tendencies of our ours, we can't even overcome. We're constantly battling. We're constantly fighting, you know, how to overcome these tendencies because they keep coming back again and again and we end up falling prey to them. So, so when we say the word enjoy, not Sri Krishna doesn't enjoy the way you think he enjoyed. Yes, he's the highest rasika. He's the one who enjoys the rasa. Ras Leela, they are the Rasa, the essence of the sweetness, it's a play, it's prema, you know, the nectar sweet love with each of the divine gopis, that is what he enjoys, that enjoyer also, it's not the way you think you enjoy, there is no sensual pleasure he gets, because he's a perfect celibate, and in, like I said, I will definitely narrate the story about uh, Durvasa Mahamuni and Radha, on what exactly this enjoyer means. There's a very beautiful story associated with that and also will give you an understanding as to what this Ras Leela actually means. Okay, but now let us continue with the lesson. A devotee totally devoid of devotion, knowledge and renunciation is indeed in, in a poor, piteous state. He is first fixed in renunciation and then given knowledge and devotion. His making people offer Dakshina is really a mark of this renunciation. Later, they are guided to the path of devotion and made proficient in knowledge. See, this is the truth. I already explained. The only reason why Baba will accept Dakshina is to first give you the renunciation, to invoke that. The, you know, to invoke the renunciation in you. And later, he will put you on the path of devotion and make you proficient in the knowledge of the truth. To get you the real understanding of the spiritual truth, not the material worldly knowledge. Then, every word you will be able to see, you know, when you see the words, knowledge will open up. Because the knowledge is self, within yourself. 
it's self-revealed. It will reveal itself to you at the right time. That understanding will dawn on you. But continuously studying and being devoted and doing the prescribed duties is extremely important. And what else do we do? But give tenfold of what we receive and gradually lead them to the path of knowledge. As he heard this, Dharamsi became greedy. Okay, I'm going to read this again. And what else do we do? But give tenfold of what we receive and gradually lead them to the path of knowledge. As he heard this, Dharamsi became greedy. Of his own will, he placed 15 rupees in Baba's hand. He forgot his earlier resolve. It was almost strange. See, um, and also you need to understand one thing. Never offer Dakshina with an intention that you're going to get something back. Never ever do that. Because then it is not Dakshina. Because you have a hidden agenda to that. And when you offer with that hidden agenda, there is a karma accruing in your name. You need to know that. But whatever you give, when you give it from your heart, the Divine Lord Almighty, the Great Masters will grant you that benediction. But don't give thinking that you're going to get something back. That is not the way to offer Dakshina at all. So here his mind has already come. See, he's saying as he heard this, Dharamsi became greedy. That's not right. Becoming greedy because you have to get something. Even the desire to get the spiritual knowledge or spiritual will is not right. So you're giving with an intention. There should be no intention. There should only be love and devotion when you offer anything to the divine and to the Lord Almighty. No, please understand this. This is very important. How to give. And I will do, uh, whenever the time is right, I will actually give a lesson on how, what it means to offer, what it means to give. Of his own will, he placed 15 rupees in Baba's hand. He forgot his earlier resolve. It was almost strange. In vain was my earlier boasting, I, he felt. It is as well that I came personally. I have learned for myself what sadhus are like and have become fond of them through my own experience. And so, without proper consideration, I had decided not to come just for making obeisance. In the end, I did that too, and on and all on my own. Truly, leelas of these sadhus are incomprehensible. And what can be impossible for him, on whose lips is Allah Malik, all the time? But I was eager to see for myself only the miracles that the sadhus perform. Oh, how vain has been my resolve. I have actually prostrated before a human being and offered him Dakshina without his asking for it. In vain has been my boasting of my own will. I lowered my head at Sai's feet in reverence. What greater marvel can there be? Oh, how can I describe Sai's skill adequately? Although it is he who is doing all this outwardly, he displays total displays Total detachment. Can there be a greater wonder than this? You may or may not salute him. May give or not give any Dakshina. But the spring of joy, this all-merciful sigh, never scorns anyone. For him, there is no joy at being worshipped, regret or pain at being derided. This is wow. This is the truth. See, this is something we need to understand. That it doesn't matter to the great masters whether somebody worships them or somebody derides them because they have that equanimity of mind. They are the Sachidanan. They're always in that eternal blissful self. They don't get tainted by anybody. You know, the moment we see an object, our mind is already made judgment. It gets tainted. It's very difficult. We have to fight ourselves so much to overcome. Looking at an object, we make judgment. Something happens to us. Either we are sway, whether we feel happy or being loved, whatever the feeling, right? Either it's goodness or you find evilness or unhappy or hurt, whatever the feeling that you evo in, in you know evokes within you. It could be feeling aversion to that object you might not like and you can already see your face changing like that. My Guruji will tell me many a time, see, you, you're reacting, your mind is reacting. When will you be able to overcome this? So to become what Baba is or to become that Almighty, Lord, sorry, Lord Almighty, like my Krishna Guruji, to do a deep sadhana, it's not overnight. I have to practice and practice and practice and this knowledge will someday embed and most important is application of that knowledge. I have to practice. When those objects keep coming in front of me, 
I will have to become calm. I don't have to react. I have to, I have to teach my mind not to react. My Krishna Guruji has written a very beautiful update. Um, you know, he's in that he said that I'll keep putting that object back again and again in front of you so that you can overcome that and you can control your mind. The reason that object is going to come in front of you so that you can succeed, you can progress, not because you have to regress. So you need to fight your demons. That is what Devi Mahatmyam is all about. You have to fight your fears. You have to fight your demons. And why do you think they're demons? They're not demons. It's about you overcoming your mind. It is not about that object. It is about your mind. That is what my Krishna Guruji teaches. So coming back. And so without proper consideration, I had decided not. Okay, we finish this. Oh, how vain has been my resolve. I have actually prostrated before a human being and offered him Dakshina without his asking for it. In vain has been my boasting of my own will. I lowered my head at Sai's feet in reverence. What greater marvel can there be? Oh, how can I describe Sai's skill adequately? Although it is he who is doing all this outwardly, he displays total, displays total detachment. Can there be a greater wonder than this? You may or may not salute him may give or not give any dakshina, but this spring of joy, this all-merciful sigh, never scorns anyone. For him, there is no joy at being worshipped, regret or pain at being derided. And here, where there is no joy, how can there be dejection? This is that very same state that completely transcends the pair of opposites. This is what we need to attain in life. Whatever might be his intention, once Sai gave darshan to anyone, he would win over his love and devotion. Such was Sai's most wonderful leela. After so, and so, after receiving from Sai Udi Prasad with his blessings, they returned to Bombay, their minds cleared of all doubts. Such was Sai's inconceivable power that before departing from Shirdi, Baba's permission had to be taken. And if his command was disregarded, it was an invitation to trouble. If you returned from there of your own accord, formidable obstacles came on the way, which were difficult to overcome, resulting, resulting in regret and disgrace. Such as is described above was the position with regard to returning from Shirdi and so was our condition to nobody will come if I do not bring him. These were Baba's words. Unless I wish it, who can step over this his threshold? Who can come to Shirdi of his own will and take darshan? All our movements are in the power of Sai Samarth, who is mercy incarnate. When his heart is moved by compassion, only then can one come for his darshan. This was the condition for coming or going to Shirdi. If Sai's heart was not pleased, no permission would be granted to anyone to go with his Udi Prasad. When one prostrated before him in obeisance and asked permission, his giving the Udi Prasad with blessings was in itself the permission to go. Now, I shall relate a novel experience about the power of this Udi and then proceed with the story of the power of Nevaskar's devotion and the favor he received from Sai, the most excellent one. A gentleman from Bandra, by caste a CKP, was not able to sleep peacefully at night in spite of all efforts. The, move, the moment he closed his eyes and fell asleep, suddenly his diseased father would appear in his dream and wake him up every day. With curses and abuses, he would enumerate the good and bad things of the past, the secret, complex, detestable thoughts and fire at him a volley of stringing abusive words. This happened day after day and every night his sleep was ruined. He could not understand nor could he avoid the suffering that thus inflicted on him. The man was tormented on account of this but could think of no way out. So he asked a Sai devotee what remedy he should try. I, for one, know of no other remedy but Sai Maharaj, the abode of all excellence. And if you will also keep full faith, his Udi will manifest its own power. Whatever he was told, he followed it precisely. And his experience too was the same. He never had the night, that nightmare again. 
by a wonderful concurrence of destiny and his good karma, his friend happened to be a devotee of Sai Samarth who praised the remarkable power of the Udi, offering him, a, offering him a little at the same time. And he told him, apply a little to your forehead before going to sleep and keep the rest in a packet near the pillow, remembering Sri Sai in your mind. Have faith and devotion in your heart and then see the marvel of the Sudhi. It will instantly remove your trouble for that is that is its natural property. You know, what is my Udi? My Guruji's, you know, the, the holy water, which is the water which has washed the holy feet of my Guruji. And that is the thief which we drink every single day. And his photo, the feet of his picture the, is always there on my head. So when I sleep, no matter what kind of, you know, dream or anything, it doesn't even matter. His grace, his, or his feet is always on my head. That is my faith. So you can make that yours as well. Whatever that faith is, whatever that, that, you know, the little things that you think will help you, when you put that faith in that, none of these calamities will ever affect you. No calamities, no dreams, nothing can come and touch your way. Because why? The grace of your master, the divine Lord Almighty, is always a firewall around you. So don't have to worry. That's why Baba says, why fear when I am here? When he followed the instructions, he enjoyed a profound sleep that night, wiping away all traces of that bad dream to the great joy of that gentleman. Who can describe the joy? He always kept the packet carefully near his pillow and remembered Sai constantly. Later, he brought Baba's photograph and offered it a garland on the Thursday, placing the photograph on the wall at the head of the bed. Oh my God, this is so cute. <laughs> it's exactly what I just said. So you keep that photo, whatever that is, right? What you, what you like, you know, wherever you feel comfortable. Like somebody might want to just see that, you know, picture the moment you wake up. So you can place it right in front of you. So you can see that and when you wake up, it's the first thought has to be the thought of the divine while you sleep as well. The last thought of the day should be the thought of the divine alone. He kept the he kept up the practice. Sorry, he now began. No, later he brought Baba's photograph and offered it a garland on the Thursday, placing a photograph on the wall at the head of the bed. He respectfully performed the puja. He now began taking darshan of the photograph and offering it a garland every Thursday as he offered puja mentally. Gradually, all his sufferings came to an end. He kept up the practice faithfully and enjoyed a lasting peace and happiness. He forgot altogether his earlier suffering and the disturbed sleep, the nightmares, etc. This, however, is just one of the benefits of the Woody. I shall now narrate another more marvelous benefit as to how it fulfills the desired objective when used in the moment of great calamity. We still have 10 minutes to go. So I will start the story. Hopefully we can complete. If not, we will continue tomorrow. There was once a staunch devotee named Balaji Patil Nevaskar who had worn out his body in the most extraordinary service to Baba. It was Nevaskar's daily work to sweep the roads of approach and exit from the village and the road that led to Lendi on which Baba trod. After him, it was Radha Krishna Bai's remarkable ability that came useful in continuing the same system of work. The foolish idea never even touched her pure heart as to how to do this mean work when she was born in the revered Brahmin Varana. On getting up early in the morning, broom in hand, she would herself sweep all the roads that Baba trod on. Truly blessed was her service. So clean, so quick was her work. Who else could compare with her in it? After some time, Abdul came forward to take it over. And so, such was that very fortunate Patil, who, though in the worldly life, was yet totally detached from it. Listen to that part of the story which describes his great spirit of sacrifice. After the reaping of the harvest from the field was over, he would bring all the grain to the mosque, pile it up in a heap in the courtyard and offer it at Baba's feet. Looking up to Baba as the master of all, 
that he possessed, he would take home from it only as much as Baba was pleased to give him for the subsistence of his, himself and the family. The used water that flowed out from the washing place after Baba's bath and his washing his hands, feet, mouth, etc. was all the water that Bala drank. Can you believe this? That is so profound. And it is not in everybody's capacity to drink the water. People think, oh, yuck, how can I drink somebody's dirty feet washed? No, sir, it's not dirty feet. It's the holy feet. You must be blessed to drink that water which is washed you know, as which where we wash the padukas of the great masters because that will remove all your sins, it will remove all your sicknesses, it will remove your tendencies and you will evolve on the path of spiritual love and devotion will spring within you. Your cleansing process will happen. You don't know the great merit that it carries. The practice continued without a break while Nevaskar was alive and his son has carried it forward up till now. Though only in, a, in part, he too would always send grain and till his nirvana, Baba used to eat jova bread made out of it four times a day. Once it so happened that it was Bala's annual Shraddha. Food was cooked and ready and the servers began serving it. According to the estimated number of guests, Enough food had been cooked. But as the food was being served, it was noticed that the actual numbers of diners had increased threefold. The hostess grew nervous and began whispering her anxiety to the mother-in-law. How can we be saved from this embarrassing situation? But the mother-in-law had unwavering faith that when Sai Samar stands behind us firmly, why should we worry? Rest assured, she said. Assured thus, the mother-in-law picked up a handful of woody and sprinkled a little in each of the vessel of food, covering it carefully afterwards. She then said, go and serve without any fear, but remove the covering just enough for the purpose of serving and cover up the vessel again. This one thing you must observe without fail. This food belongs to Sai, not a particle of it is ours, and he alone will come to our rescue. Any shortcomings will be his, not ours. As the resolve of that mother-in-law, so was her experience also. Without any obstacle, each and every guest was fed well. All ate and were satisfied. Everything passed off properly, and still the vessels were full as they had been before. Oh my God, what a profound story and what a great faith this mother-in-law had. And in this context, I will narrate a beautiful experience in a similar, in just exactly to that in my own case with my Krishna Guruji and we will end the Parayan today. Okay, this so happened, I, when I was on sabbatical, when I didn't have a job, I was managing with, you know, whatever the savings I had. So it was a point where, yes, things were getting difficult because I didn't have sufficient and had to manage everything. One day, my Guruji had gone out. He had traveled and he went to attend some wedding. And at that time, he had got an offering from one of his disciples and devotees. He just, when he came back, he gave me the packet of offering and said, keep this with you. He neither counted how much the money was. He didn't, he will never touch. That's, that's his, he'll always bring it and hand it over. And at that time, even I think I, I don't remember, but vaguely, I think I just counted. He, he always needs, what is the offering somebody has given to him? So that's, that goes into his account, like I said. So I think I did count and let him know which I vaguely remember but after that I had kept this packet with me and I never opened that ever after that and during those times we, you know we decided to go on a pilgrimage so we were traveling to different temples in South India yes there was always there was 
uh, we, we were running in a very stringent budget and yes it was quite strict so i said okay let me make use of some of these some of that offering so to you know to offer at the temple and for you know paying little little expenses and it was also during dashara and diwali time so we do celebrate so there were the, the additional expenses so i kept taking the money and did not see okay for whatever reason i didn't bother to count and i and to date i have not opened the cover i would just close my eyes and just remove the money and use it oh no you know what i was little shocked what's happening because i've been using the money from this for a while and it still it kept coming so i don't know where it is so that is like an akshay patra the faith in that in in your guru that he will take care everything will be you know everything will fall in place that money will come how i don't know how the puja will happen i don't know expenses would take care so his magic happens like this that that pouch became an akshay patra doesn't mean yeah there was not million dollars whatever that little so please don't get me wrong here and don't, don't try to oh we want that you know don't come for a treasure hunt huh? it just to give an ex example it was an experience so and then you know i would just i couldn't count it i didn't count it and then it kept coming i'm like oh my god i was shocked i, I got scared for a moment and and i'm like and then i i told one day to my guruji you know what you remember you gave me this packet and i had just kept it in my hand bag because we were traveling and every single time i kept removing and kept removing during the entire journey i don't know where this money came from and it just came from it just, it was just coming out that is the power and the greatness of this master this is how it works but you can the moment you open and see it gone that's it nothing is going to come in that pouch will become empty similarly in this case the food would have not been sufficient enough to feed the people but you don't open similar are many stories even in guru charitra it is very beautifully explained a similar story and when we go do guru charitra you will learn that so with this i will end today's sai sat charitra parayan and thank you joining for today's session wishing you all a very happy navratri and a happy guruvar Om Shri Mahaganapate Namaha Om Shri Guru Dev Dutta Om Shri Sachidananda Sadguru Sainath Maharaj Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Digambara Digambara Shri Pad Vallabha Digambara Om Shri Krishna Guru Nath Nath Ay Shri Guru Ve Namaha Om Devi Durgaaya Namaha Om Shri Krishna Arpanam Namastu Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum